Hey, I'm Tommy, and this is the all new Aperture ALMC, a pocket sized RGB WW LED light that you can control with your phone. It has magnets on the back, and it gets pretty bright. It comes with this nice little diffuser that you can put on there to make the light a little bit softer. It's like a rubber or silicone diffuser. Let's just put it right there for now. Pa. Obviously this is powerful enough to work as my background light, but I've only got one of these and I'm gonna keep it right here for this video. Anyways, it's the new light Aperture has released to take on the pocket sized video light market that has popped up, gotten pretty popular lately. This light was announced at NAB 2019. I was actually there for the announcement and there was a bunch of other YouTubers and filmmakers and it was pretty cool to be in a room of like-minded people that were just as excited for lighting as I was. Other than a few minutes of the hands-on we got with the ALMC, we didn't know much about what it was going to be or what was gonna be included in the box or how much it would cost. It's been a few months now and Aperture sent this one out for me to review. I shot a little teaser commercial for it uh, the other day just for fun. I'll throw that at the end of this video if you wanna watch it. Anyways, it turns out individual lights for the ALMC are gonna cost $90 each, which is really competitively priced compared to the competition. So in the box, you get a USB-C charging cable, a rubbery silicone diffuser that I've got on it right now, a nice little carrying pouch, and two extra sticky mounting pads. Beyond that, it's got two really powerful magnets on the back that open up a ton of new mounting and positioning possibilities like how I've just attached it to this C-stand. It can get a full charge in 90 minutes using the USB-C cable, and you can power it for about two hours on full power before needing another charge. And if you misplace your USB-C charging cable, you can charge it on almost any wireless charging device. I briefly tested the ones I had laying around my house for my iPhone, and it worked just as expected. You'll get a much quicker charge over USB-C though. It takes about three and a half hours to charge it to full wirelessly. And it has wireless charging because you can also buy a special suit case full of these things in kits of between four and 12 lights each. And each of these custom cases have slots for all your ALMCs to wirelessly slot in and charge. So you don't have to keep plugging in a ton of lights to their own individual USB cables. I only have the single unit though, so I, I don't have the suitcase yet. If I did have the suitcase and a bunch more of these though, the suitcase would also be a really convenient way to carry them around. And the 12 light kit can also be charged over DTAP, so your big collection of VMAP batteries isn't completely useless here. I'm just speculating here, but I think it'd be awesome if they made a way to remove the top half of the new suitcase and add a light stand mount to the piece that has all the lights on it. Then you could plug in groups of these together as their own standalone light panel while charging them because you could plug the suitcase in. It'd also be really easy to control that as a light panel because Aperture has been developing this Citus Link app and this is the first light to use it. it. Makes controlling this light and groups of lights all at the same time really easy. And being able to be controlled by that app makes this one of the most advanced lights that is on the market today, especially at this price point. Not only is this a full RGB WW light, meaning you get great color quality throughout the Kelvin range because there are both tungsten and daylight colored LEDs, but you also have full control of the hue, saturation, and intensity from the fixture itself, as well as the mobile app that pairs with the mesh network that Aperture's new lights now create. As far as that mesh network is concerned, you can attach right now up to 100 lights to a stable network and instantly turn the whole network on or off with your phone. And your lights can be spread out up to 400 meters away from you, as long as there is at least one light every 80 meters apart in that network. So you can create small or large groups with a few lights or a lot of lights or just one light, configure or enable individual lights or scenes for each group of lights. And then if your phone dies, you can just download the app on somebody else's phone and log into your network and then continue to control the network that you've already set up. The Citus Link app is still in its infancy, but because Aperture is one of the few companies that quickly iterates and takes user feedback so strongly, you know you're gonna get some really powerful features delivered to your lights pretty quickly, probably within the next few months. There's already a dedicated trigger button built into the app for just the lightning mode, so if you have four windows in a room, you can stick one ALMC on each one of those windows and then trigger the lightning effect at the same time for all of those lights. It makes creating an effect like this a lot more affordable and easier to do than it has been in the past. There's also a color matcher within the app which uses your phone's camera to identify and select colors for your lights. 
If you don't want to use the Citus Link app though, you don't have to. You can still control the light through the simple clicky scroll wheel they have on the fixture. But if you use the app, you will have access to a lot more customization and more features. It's a pretty small light in itself, slightly bigger than a credit card, so using it as a key light is going to look like a pretty hard light, unless you have an additional piece of diffusion between the light and yourself. For example, so I've got the ALMC set up about two and a half feet away from me uh, with no additional diffusion other than the little silicon diffuser that it comes with. And you can tell it looks pretty hard because the surface area of that little silicon diffusion sheet is also still very small. But you don't always need to use beautiful giant diffused light though. And there's a lot of situations where something like this simply just makes sense. And this seems like it was designed to be used as either part of a bigger network, as an easy to place and control background or accent light, or as a light you would use in difficult situations. And my studio is simply just not a difficult situation. I have everything that I need here. But if I were carrying my camera around, trying to vlog in a hotel or somewhere that is not my studio, sticking this light in metal corners of walls or fridges or appliances, just as a way to illuminate myself off center would look better than just a camera mounted light in my opinion. Because I think that that vlog light position, which you get right here when you have a light directly in front of your face, is just kind of like really unflattering. And this just gives you more options to practice creativity. But back to key lighting, if we take the middle piece of a five in one reflector and use it as diffusion anyways, it'll work like any other soft light. But as you can see, it's not really meant for that. You might want to use a little bit more powerful light for a setup like this. If you're looking for a really capable and portable panel that you can use as a really bright key light, you should check out the Aperture Tray C. It's actually one of my favorite lights. It's super bright and it's like almost indestructible. It uh, also looks really cool. But back to the ALMC though. Actually, you know, it's not so bad if I bump the ISO a little bit and lower my f-stop down to like f1.4, ISO 800. It's not too bad, uh, but still, you know, if I turn the background lights on back to where they were, you know, it just looks... I, I guess you could get away with this, but either way, I'd still recommend a different light as your key light, because I like something that can get be a little bit brighter. This is a very controlled environment. Either way, uh, let's move on and get some real data. All right, we're measuring with the UPR Tech CV600, one meter away at 6,500 Kelvin at 100% power. We are getting 104 lux and the CCT is measuring 6217. CRI is 97.6 and the TLCI is 98.9, almost 99. That's higher than I get on a cloudy day at my house. I measured the diffused clouds and I got a 98.2. So that's pretty good. At this point, color temperature and color quality is coming from these LEDs is just stellar. All right, at 5600 Kelvin, we're measuring 5358 Kelvin and 108 lux at 100% power. 97.2 CRI, 98.9 TLCI. And we're going to bump down to 3200 Kelvin. And we're measuring 98.5 CRI, 98.5 TLCI. Color temperature is 3137 and the Lux is 107.7. So very consistent brightness throughout the range, very high color quality. And it looks like the closer to tungsten you get, the more accurate the color temperature is. But even up at the top end, it's only off by a few hundred Kelvin, so you're good to go. And let's do a flicker test. And you shouldn't have any flicker problems with this light. I just wanted to run a quick test on the output of the individual colors. Uh, 43 lux for red, 60 lux for green, and 30 lux for blue. So my thoughts on the Aperture ALMC. It is a very handy, very capable little light with a ton of tech packed into it at a price point that seems more than fair. I will be comparing this guy to a bunch of other available small pocket size RGB lights in the near future. So if you wanna see that video, make sure you are subscribed. And if you give this video a thumbs up, it'll let YouTube know my videos don't suck and that they should recommend them more often. Also, if you wanna buy your own Aperture ALMC, feel free to use the links in the description. And if you aren't already aware, Aperture has a yearly film festival where they give away insane prizes and like this year, it's $200,000 in lighting and a red camera package. All you have to do is submit a short film with a behind the scenes video. And I'll put a link to the description and the rules in this video as well. 
And also there's a little teaser commercial that I threw together for the ALMC just for fun while I was testing a gimbal last week. I shot it using the Fujifilm X-T3 with the 16 to 55 millimeter f2.8 lens while using the Mosa Aircross 2 to create the smooth gliding footage. And I graded it in DaVinci Resolve. And I used the free version because I'm cheap. It took me about 45 minutes to shoot and edit and I had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, no one paid me to do it or anything. I just needed a reason to play with my gimbal and I wanted to show off the new ALMC. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one and here's the clip.